Welcome everyone to part three of the Myth Bust Monday season one finale. In this video, we're gonna take on the final eight myths we've covered in the 25 episode series so far. And this will officially mark the end of season one. I'm thinking that season two should boot back up sometime in the middle of 2019. And I'm hoping to debut my new Technique Tuesday series a little later this month. Um, so as before, I'm gonna skip many of the details here. So just make sure you check out the corresponding link to the full length video for each topic in the description box below if you'd like more of that detail. Uh, but without further ado, here we go. Uh, so up first is the idea that you should eat breakfast to sort of provide the nutrients you need to get your day started off on the right foot. And while it sounds perfectly reasonable, and I'm sure we've all heard it plenty, as it turns out, it doesn't have much scientific legitimacy. Research from Betts and colleagues found no difference in resting metabolic rate between groups eating and skipping breakfast which makes up the biggest chunk of total metabolism here. And while this study did find that breakfast eaters moved around more and burned more calories during the day, this was nearly perfectly offset by the fact that they also overate by about the same number of calories because of the calories included in the breakfast meal. So on balance under free living conditions, there actually isn't much of a difference in total daily energy balance between eating and skipping breakfast. So whether you choose to eat or skip should be tailored to your appetite and your preferences. And I think a Weightology Research Review article from James Krieger summarized this well. Eating breakfast is a personal preference. If you eat breakfast, make it large and high in protein. And if you don't, just make sure your first meal of the day is large and high in protein. Uh, but ultimately, skipping breakfast is just one strategy to reduce caloric intake, and you'll need to determine whether skipping breakfast helps you eat less overall during the day. Um, so this has been a controversial one for me. Uh, in the original video, I laid out four studies examining targeted fat loss. So the idea that you can selectively lose fat from specific body parts. Now, the first study found that active swinging arms weren't leaner than non-active non-swinging arms in tennis players. Uh, but this study was limited by being merely observational, not interventional. Uh, the second study showed that when you only train one arm across 12 weeks, you don't find any any difference in fat volume between the trained and untrained arm. Uh, but this study was also limited because it didn't find much fat loss overall. So perhaps spot reduction just wasn't detected here. Now in contrast to this third study did see significant overall fat loss and again, didn't find spot reduction in trained versus untrained legs. However, a new study published just last year really applied pressure to these earlier findings when one group that trained upper body only for 12 weeks lost way more arm fat and another group that trained lower body only for 12 weeks lost way more leg fat, implying that local targeted fat reduction was at play, which I think maybe it was. Now, an important detail here is that all subjects performed 30 minutes of light cycling after training, implying that perhaps the body does increase fat mobilization from stores nearby the exercising muscle. And if it's burned as fuel immediately after training, this could lead to more net fat loss in that specific area. Um, but to me, I think this is mostly just boiled down to a new launching pad for future research. Um, this paper did have a small sample size and is running counter to the general scientific consensus up to this point. Um, so despite impressive findings here, I'm still not confident actually making the recommendation that you can selectively target body fat. And so I'm just gonna leave a highly skeptical question mark on this one for now. So similar to whether fresh or frozen produce is better, uh, which cooking method is best is gonna depend on what specific food you're looking at. Uh, on the whole, it seems that steaming is slightly better for preserving nutrients and boiling seems to be the worst, especially for water soluble vitamins like vitamin C. And of course this supports the general advice that you should avoid high heat and lots of water when cooking. Um, also, there's no reason to avoid the microwave. That's a safe technology and can often have favorable effects on nutrition. Um, so generally speaking, I think the best advice is to simply have a diet filled with a variety of different fruits and vegetables and try to use a variety of different cooking methods when you can. 优卡进场, 一分钟一元,